Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Saturday, January 20th at 11.15 p.m. 2018. You're looking at Tori Biala. Tori Albla. <laughs> uh, this team of scientists had been up there for the last three weeks capturing drone footage because of the uptick in volcanic activity on this volcano. This is a Costa Rican volcano that has been erupting for several years. But the recent uptick um, has gotten volcanologists concerned by the potential for an explosive eruption on this particular earthquake. Now, this is a very long video, and I'll let you guys watch it on your own. So I'll leave you links to that. It's the drone captures activity of impressive Tori Alba, and we'll get to it. Let's get to the update. Although you may be sick of winter, guys, late January and early February are prime time for winter storms. In particular here, February 5th to 7th, blizzard in 1978. We're talking snowfall totals from 20 to 30 plus inches in the Boston area. The peak winter storm season is almost upon, upon us. Several great snowstorms have impacted the Midwest and Northeast during this period between late January and early February. Storms during this period can drop feet of snow and cause wind gusts over 50. You might be hoping that winter is over, but take a look at the graph. January 20th to March 1st, and that's a boom. That's the peak season. Now going into this grand solar minimum shift, these Late season storms are going to be starting to spike. So we're going to have maybe winter storm warnings all the way into the late spring and into early summer. Like we had a frost this year in late June here. That's a heads up. So none of the storms that are happening now are going to compare to the storms that are going to be happening shortly. Here's the blizzard of 78. The Cleveland Superbomb, they called it. <laughs> and I'm going to show you some similar similar patterns to the Cleveland Superbomb right now. This is the GFS model currently. It's snowing outside. If I was able to bring the camera out there, there's six inches on the ground. Moments ago, I just hit a huge deer destroying the front right side of my lower quarter panel of my truck, jamming it into my tire. But I was able to gut the animal, put it in the back of my truck. Now I got 350 pounds of fresh venison waiting for me to butcher in the morning in the back of my truck when I assess the damage. That's how you do that. Let's get back to the update. We got about four or five inches out here, and this storm is now just coming in here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, huge waves being reported. We reported on a man being swept away yesterday. And as we move this through till tomorrow, the entire state of Colorado is going to be covered in snow, and I want you to quick watch the isobars here. This wind here is causing record waves pummeling the coast of Oregon right now. Now, and the isobars are loose in this low pressure, but as we move through, it tightens up into a very similar looking storm to the Cleveland Superbomb. And this is the new type of pattern. This looks exactly like the Cleveland Superbomb, just a little bit to the west. There it is, question mark. So we're looking at this Superbomb storm to create havoc here on the east. So on Monday, the Great Lakes region could see hail and thunderstorms and major flooding. And then this is going to wash all of the six feet of snow, six to ten feet of snow out of... Western New York in an epic fashion. And by Tuesday, we're talking coastal flooding from Florida up to Maine and a nightmare. And that's just getting started. We have another system coming in here on the 23rd that's going to be twice as big. And this is going to bring the major destructive storms down into Southern California, hopefully all the way to the tip. You might get a little piece there. But this is when the three to five foot of snow comes into the Sierras and we have another blizzard developing. Another Cleveland bomb. Another Cleveland question mark. Look at the dangerous nature. I can't wait to see what happens on the Gulf Coast here and the Pacific Northwest. Here is Sunday, the 28th, and we'll stop there. Let's quick go to Windy because it's pretty to look at. And you can see the blizzard, the little nice snowstorm here is going to develop into a blizzard within two days. 
It's going to move into Nebraska here, South Dakota tomorrow. And then that's when this low really pricks, picks up speed. It's going to be sucking Gulf moisture in here. And by Sunday night, Monday morning, the blizzard begins. And we're talking blizzard conditions in Nebraska, the corner of South Dakota here in southern Minnesota, and northwestern Iowa are going to get pummeled just for a few hours. So interesting to see what the snow totals come in off of this. As all this Gulf moisture gets sucked up into the system, it then moves north, pummels northern Wisconsin by Monday night, and then it's sucking warm moisture all the way up the east coast. It's a very weird pattern. Very similar to the 1978 pattern. And there you have it through Wednesday, and I'll stop it. By Wednesday, the next storm is going to be coming in to the Pacific Northwest, and it just does not stop for you guys all the way through February. We have four storms in the next two weeks coming across North America. And that's a heads up. Is there something that we're repeating in 1978 that might be similar that we could come and look at? And that's the satire TS. Here's 1978. Right here at the bottom of cycle 20 going into cycle 21. And we're in a similar part. I would say that we're going to get another storm of 78 in a year or two. And it's going to eclipse all the records of that particular storm. Simply based on the solar model here. This is the actual total solar irradiance data coming from multiple sources. And you can see what happened in 1978. The total solar irradiance had dipped to a level uh, it hadn't been for 14 years. And now we're at a level that hasn't been seen for hundreds of years. So this pattern is coming back into effect. Heavy dust storm envelops parts of the Middle East, turning the sky dark red, coming out of the watchers. A heavy dust storm engulfed parts of Turkey, Iraq, Syria on the 19th, turning the skies into dark red over the next 72 hours. I... There's going to be all kind of conspiracy theories about this, guys. <laughs> but that's just what happens with Sahara sand. The dust cloud is expected to sweep Iran, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan, but with decreasing concentrations. Dust storms are very prevalent during ice ages. Drone captures the activity of impressive tour of Now, guys, the reason they're here, I told you why. They're here. <laughs> because there's increased activity and they're a little bit worried. Now, using the drone, they could observe at a, a depth close to 250 meters, the southeast edge of the active crater. You've got to watch this video. It is pretty damn impressive. And it's six minutes long, so it's really good. would lengthen the uh, update here to unreasonable amounts. But this guy's radical, and he gets a thumbs up from me. He knows what he's doing, and he's taking huge risks to get this done. Heads up to volcanologists. You'll get links to that. There's more on the volcanic uptick. We have Cinnabung erupting today. I have video footage of it. Mayan is still unstable, according to Fivalk's gorgeous rainbow footage here. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology has warned disaster and local officials not to be complacent, reminding them that Mayan remains in a highly abnormal and unpredictable state. And that is our first boom of the day. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> there it goes. So that's a heads up there. Mayan is still unstable according to Philvox. Do not be complacent. Volcanic activity worldwide. Dukono, Volcano, Sinabong, Sakujorima, Sabankaya, and Kadavar. All We've been watching all these. Now, it's interesting, the Sakajorima, the Japan, and the Sinabung Indonesian earthquakes, it's hard to get footage, but lots of locals in Indonesia have been capturing footage of the Sinabung volcano. And this is a volcanic ash advisory coming out today. It was cloudy, so it's difficult to capture the volcano, but we have it here from Yukizi. Been covering Agung and other volcanoes. And so this is just from 12 hours ago. The most recent eruption of Sinabung.
and you're going to watch a massive plume of smoke now adding to here. Mm. This is a lot of stratospheric aerosols. And the local people really are, this just looks like cloud cover to them. And to you, probably. I mean, you could see these clouds coming in here, but this is massive amounts of volcanic ash cooling the planet. It's called the albedo effect. We've been covering it with snow cover. <clears throat> now, the albedo effect with clouds is different because it's the white tops of the clouds up here that reflect the sun back into space, whereas the snow's on the surface, but it's the same effect. You're getting more albedo in the tropics, cooling the tropics. So we're cooling the northern hemisphere with all the snow cover, and we're cooling the tropics with all this volcanic aerosols clearly being ejected into this uh, atmosphere. These are not stratospheric eruptions, this one in particular. It has to go above 30,000 feet to, to do that. I'll leave you links to all this, and let's get to it. Earthquake swarm in U.S. has lasted seven days. This is Reno. <coughs> A lot of you have been... Uh, there's a lot of conspiracy theorists and other alarmists on YouTube talking about these long duration earthquakes. This is where they're emanating from this area and good explanation here. There's nothing to worry about. This is uh, pretty standard. I did research into the literature. Long duration earthquakes are typically not associated with creating volcanic activity historically. And that's what the papers I read, but some volcanic activity can cause long duration earthquakes when it's happening. Clearly, there's no volcanic activity happening in Reno, so therefore, this is not associated with volcanic activity. As I said, I think it's the inflationary Earth model, and all the normal faults in the area are simply slip faulting. If we go to the seismic update, we have a, a moderate uptick in earthquakes globally, and that is because the KP has been low for days, allowing for that lith lithospheric flexure to occur. The Peruvian area has become active again with the 6.3 popping off 76 kilometers south of Putre, Chile. And we have a, a small earthquake in the New Madrid area today. Nothing to be alarmed about because there is... It's not like the uptick we had four months ago when there was over 20 earthquakes per week in this area. That's not occurring. There are aftershocks and the geysers happening right now while we're doing the video in the small scale, but that's to be expected. There's your seismic update. <clears throat> Two things I want to show you real quick. Climate change as a search term has been falling off for the last year in interest. It has lost over 100, it has dropped over 100% since the same time last year. And the good news is that the grand solar minimum has going straight up off the charts, just like the man hockey stick, just like global warming, the grand solar minimum has taken over the search engines. And that, ooh, that's a good one. It's a John Stewart spinning in his chair, jiffy boom boom. And there's the first boom, and there's the spin around. Global warming much? I doubt it. Grand solar minimum much? Boom. And that is what's happening. Because there are facts available that people can see, and there's so much nonsense that they don't give up anymore. They want to know the facts. Nonsense. The nonsense ended sometime in June of last year. And people were like, yeah, that's bullshit. Grand solar minimum much? Yes. And that's thanks to channels like ours and people like you that are watching and sharing this information. 200 years ago, we endured a year without a summer. Please, let's not endure a year without a summer without being prepared. A lot of you are commenting, you're really unfamiliar with what happened in the past. And you should really be very familiar with what happened 200 years ago if it affected the whole population of the Earth. This is not taught in schools. This is the most significant weather event globally. And it should be where you start in all science classes to teach about the history of our planet. Now, snow in June, freezing temperatures in July. How about a killer frost in August? It's called the year without a summer. And this is all according to one Vermont farmer. Two centuries ago, in 1816, we had a year without a summer. It became the year without a summer for millions in parts of North America and Europe, leading to fail crops and near famine conditions. While they didn't know that the chills caused at the time, 
It was the additive effect of the Dalton minimum. Let's see if we can get that up here. And Tambora erupting. Now, guys, this happened just three years after the New Madrid quake. So North America is completely destroyed and in shambles. And right here during the Dalton minimum, between cycle five and six, in the upswing of six, Tambora erupts. And the cooling had already been started. Here the blizzard of 78 happening at the bottom of cycle 20. Here we are at the bottom of cycle 24. That's why we're seeing the same weather patterns. And with the increased cosmic ray flux, I believe that the year without a summer is going to come before the earthquake in New Madrid. Where 200 years ago, New Madrid faulted in the winter of 1811, and Tambora didn't erupt until the spring of 1815. It spewed millions of tons of dust and ash and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, just like we saw with Cinnabon. Changing the world's climate and dropping global temperatures as much as 3 degrees C. Now, I'll leave you links to these two articles. This is 15 facts of the year without a summer. And it gives you all the facts you need to know in the Cliff Notes version. During the April 15th of April 1815 eruption, the volcano ejected billions of tons of gas and debris into the atmosphere. It caused a volcanic winter, not global warming. We're familiar with the greenhouse effect. It is BS. Where certain gases and particulates in the atmosphere can trap heat. Well, the same gases and particulates cause cooling. They do not cause the greenhouse effect. And we obviously didn't learn from the past. A snowy day in June, agriculture suffered, disease flourished. The volcano brought us Frankenstein. The eruption turned the sky red, <laughs> like we're seeing right now in the Sahara. And the eruption may have led to Mormonism, so watch out. The year without a summer helped give us the bicycle. And crop failures further harmed a founding father. The cool down led to Arctic exploration and all the nonsense with the melting ice. Crop failures led to an opium boom. Nothing like smoking opium and doing nothing all day. But the atmosphere quickly recovered and it could happen again. And it will. And that's a boom. It's what our channel's about. The truth. It's not nonsense. It's not alarmism. It's please pull your head out of your buttocks and start preparing for the inevitable. The inevitable happens at solar, grand solar minimum. <clears throat> we have shown you more information that you need to know about the Dalton minimum.